Alrighty, with my D7000 sensor cleaned, let's talk time lapse. So this is one of my Nikon D7000 DSLRs. It's what I used to shoot the first time lapse over on Grow Lapse, link up there. And it's probably what I'm going to be using for the foreseeable future. Why the D7000? I mean, it's a pretty old camera now. It came out like 10 years ago. It's only 16 megapixels. Autofocus isn't great compared to what else is out today. You know, it's, it's pretty basic and limited. Well, the time lapses that I'm shooting are 4K and 16 megapixels is larger than 4K. So if I'm shooting full resolution RAW files with this, they're higher resolution than 4K. So that's all I need. The autofocus doesn't matter because it's manually focused. It has all the connections that I need for plugging in an intervalometer and a USB cable for connecting it to a Raspberry Pi. They do have a built-in intervalometer like most Nikon cameras now. The maximum I can really do is 999 shots. This times whatever, that's how many shots it takes per interval. So even though we do this and we get 8,991, it's like every interval, it takes nine shots. So we're only gonna be taking one shot per interval and you can only do 999 intervals. And depending on the interval, that could run out in no time. So this is my Viltrox intervalometer. I've had this a while, but you can see I haven't even taken the protective film off the LCD. This is what I was using in the first one. This works really, really well. You can set it to just shoot for infinity. As long as this has power and space on the memory card, this will keep telling this to fire and this will keep shooting. So this has been absolutely fantastic. And these are dirt cheap. I'll pop a link to either this or something similar down in the description. This is battery powered which is a problem for long-term time lapse because, you know, even if these batteries last, you know, a week, if I've got a camera shooting for a month, that's three weeks where this isn't working. I don't know exactly how long the batteries will last in this because this doesn't tell you what the battery life is. It just tells you when it's low and it hasn't told me that it's low yet. So, I mean, this could potentially last a couple of months on a pair of AAA batteries, but I'm not going to take the chance. Same goes with the camera. What I have been using is this Nikon dummy battery, which uses the Nikon EH5 AC adapter. I got like four of those and I got them years ago because the D100 had this socket built right in. I'd hoped that the EH5 would still work with this because the socket's the same. Apparently not. The EH5 puts out 7.4 volts, which is the nominal voltage of these batteries. But after three days, it was just shutting itself off. So what I've done is I've got another third party dummy battery with a DC barrel jack on the end. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to plug this into a nine volt power adapter. And, uh, and hopefully that won't shut off after two or three days. One of the big issues with long-term time lapse is keeping consistency in the lighting. I had thought about just having a continuous light that was always on, but I, I, I have no idea. I am not a plant person, <laughs> not at all. I have no idea whether leaving a light on 24 hours a day is good for a plant or bad for a plant, or if they're indifferent to it. I don't know. I knew this wouldn't last forever, but I tested out the Godox V1 speed light. Um, this on a full charge on a regular day shoot supposedly puts out you know, like 400 full power flashes on a full charge. So I thought, well, we'll run it at 16th power, which in theory gives thousands of shots and just leave it to it. But after about 16 hours, 160 shots, the battery died. So I uh, swapped over to the Monster Godox FV200, which is a, a hybrid LED flash thing. So it's a continuous light that also has flash capability. But now I need this for interviews for video for the Govan Hill Bath project that's going to be starting up. I don't know exactly when that's going to be starting up, but I don't want to have this tied up in a project for potentially, you know, a month or two and then need it on a video shoot. So this going forward is being replaced by this, the little Godox MS300. These are dirt cheap. I got it for like 103, 104 pounds. It's 300 watt seconds. It doesn't support TTL, which I don't need. It doesn't support high speed sync, which I don't need. Um, it actually has a modeling light, which was quite surprising. So we have our power switch. We can pick our group, our channel, uh, optical slave modes, turn the sound on and off, the modeling light on and off, hit a test fire flash. We can. It's got built in 2.4 gigahertz triggers to talk to the X-Pro. 
but you can also plug a 433 megahertz trigger into the USB port, or you can go with a sync cable. So you've got a nice little LCD, and and this is one of Godox's more recent AC powered strobes. This came out about a year ago or earlier this year. The only issue I've still got, and this is why I was saying we'd go back to the sync socket, I'm having some issues because I have the camera plugged into a Raspberry Pi. The reason for this is simple. Every time this takes a shot, I want it to transfer over USB cable from here to the Raspberry Pi so that I've got it backed up on an external device. Every time a new image lands on here, it gets automatically transferred to my desktop over Wi-Fi. The problem is I don't get a strong enough five gigahertz signal out in the shed, so it can't connect to the network. So I'm stuck on 2.4 gigahertz. This also operates on 2.4 gigahertz. And for the first time ever since switching to Godox, I'm actually starting to get interference. If one frame misfires the flash and it doesn't go off when it's supposed to, you notice it because you get a black frame in your video. So I've been going from the sync socket into the FV200 and I plan to go from the sync socket into the MS300. The only issue is, like the little plug-in intervalometer, this also runs on a pair of batteries. And I'm trying to completely eliminate batteries. Right now, these are the only two battery-powered things in the setup, and this is being replaced. We'll get back to that as well. Right now, I'm trying to figure out an alternate solution for this. I, the, I mean, the obvious one is just get a hot shoe adapter with a sync socket but I don't want one with the old-style PC sync socket. I want one with either a two and a half mil sync socket like this, or ideally a three and a half mil sync socket. So what I've done is I spoke to the folks at Picture Pro because you can get a replacement foot for a whole bunch of different Godox speed lights so that if this ever breaks, you can just buy the foot mechanism, unscrew this, take it off, pull out a wire, get a new one, plug in the wire, screw it back on, and you've got a new foot. And then I'll design and 3D print a little enclosure and build a bunch of three and a half mil sockets in it so that I can potentially fire several flashes at once. I think that's most of everything except talking about the replacement for this. If something's worth doing, it's worth overdoing, right? So this is the intervalometer I have been using. This is the one I made <laughs> that I'm gonna be using going forward. So this basically, here we have an ESP8266. It's a Wemos D1 Mini, which is a little microcontroller. So I can program this to do, you know, whatever I want, really. This is a real-time clock, which communicates with this so that this knows what time it is at any given moment in the day. That will be important when we talk about the lights. These are called opto isolators. These go out to this little two and a half mil socket here, which is the same as the one on here. So I can just unplug this cable, plug it into here, and this sends out the same firing signals that this does. And then this then goes into my camera. These little opto isolators electronically isolate this whole system from the camera itself so that I mean, this runs on 240 volts. I don't want to risk that going through my camera. You know, even if it fries all this, I don't care, but I don't want it blowing up my camera. So those little white chips right there, those isolate the two different electrical systems so that one can't affect the other. Here we have a little OLED display just to give me some feedback and I'll turn it on in a minute and you can have a look at that. And then here we have what's called a MOSFET. Now the Wemos D1 Mini sends out power settings down these two wires using what's called PWM, which is a pulse wave modulation signal, which basically means it turns it on and off really, really quickly to simulate different power levels. When it's on, it's always on at full power. The longer it's on, the brighter these lights get, but these are 3.3 volts, these require 12 volts. So this basically allows you to control a 12 volt signal with a 3.3 volt signal. Right now, I have this basically being powered directly. It's already pre-programmed. That's going to change. What will happen eventually is that this will plug in here to power the Pi, and then another cable will plug in from the Pi to here in order to power that. That way, everything's self-contained and all running off the same single power cable. Because I want to be able to program this from my desktop here on my computer without having to dismantle all this and physically bring it up here. Because right now to program this, I have to plug a cable in from my computer to here. I don't want to have to do that. I want to be able to program it up here, send it to the Pi, tell the Pi to program this, and then it just updates itself. What I'll do for now, just pretend the Pi doesn't exist. I am going to plug my computer into here, 
power this up and you can see what all happens. So here we go. If you keep an eye on the little OLED display. Now we zoomed in, you've got a better look. Here's the ESP8266, the Wemos D1 Mini. Here's our little real-time clock. Here are the opto isolators. Here's our OLED and here's the MOSFET. Now you can see the lights on on, but if you look at the little display here, you'll see that there are four times, dawn, sunrise, sunset, and dusk. And right now it's 12 minutes past 9 p.m., which is after dusk, which means these lights are off. Actually, you can see the time right there. According to this, this thinks it's eight minutes past or nearly nine minutes past nine, um, but it's actually 12 minutes past nine. <laughs> I'll have to update the clock. So this little next timer at the bottom is basically the timer until the next time it sends a signal out here to fire the camera. But we'll worry about that in a minute. What I'm going to do for now, I am going to update the program on this. This is why I plugged it into the computer. I'm going to update the program on this so you can see what it's doing with these lights. You should see, there's the logo on the little OLED. And in a few seconds, one now. This light should, oh, can you see it faint on the camera? You can see it's on, and as time passes, you can see those little LEDs are getting brighter and brighter and brighter and shining through the paper. So these are basically the little grow LEDs that will be helping the little seedlings turn in, or helping the seeds turn into seedlings and then the seedlings grow. So this is basically to simulate the sunrise. So instead of just having a timer that just turns them on like a normal person, I wanted it to fade in to simulate a natural sunrise. So there we go. Now we're at full brightness. If I take this away, you can see that they are actually really like super, super bright. So bright the camera can't even see. That's why I've put these on here to sort of dull them down a little bit so you can see. But yeah, now it basically, it's daylight. So it stays like this for 10, 12 hours or however long it is, depending on what time of the year I'm trying to simulate. All right, so we're a couple of seconds away now, and now we're there, we've just hit sunset. So now over the next minute or so, and I may speed this up because I don't know if I can talk for the next minute, but over the next minute or so, these should start getting dimmer and dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. But now you can see we're basically almost dead, and there we go. So now we're at night time. I'm gonna set this up now so that the light basically just stays on because the whole main reason I did it this way was for this one feature that this little intervalometer will never be able to do. Okay, so now our lights are on and they'll stay on for like another hour or two because I've changed the sunset time to like half past 10 or 10 o'clock or something. You'll notice though, if you look at the display that I've changed the timer for how often it changes the shot and you can see it's coming up next in 13, 12 seconds. Watch what happens in nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. They went out. Oh, now they're back. The reason why is because these are just there for the benefit of the plant. I don't want them to interfere with the photo because they're, they're super bright. I mean, I, I don't want those to pollute the shot with color. So the way this is set up, if I can find where I put my camera. So the way I have this set up, if I plug this into the camera now, and I'll just leave that on and it's set to manual focus. Oh, you heard it. Watch what happens and listen. The lights went out, then the camera fired. But here's my Godox flash trigger. Even though we're not using this, we'll we'll use this for now, just because it's a lot easier than trying to deal with an AC powered strobe. We'll turn this on. Test, there we go. So now, in 19 seconds, you'll see these lights go off, then the camera will fire, which will fire the flash, and then these lights will come back on. And there we go. And that's what happens every interval. So these will always be on during the daytime between the hours of dawn and dusk at some level of power. But whether these are on or off, this will make sure there's no power going to these. Then it will fire the camera so the flash can go off and light up the shot. So that is my entire reason for sort of developing this whole mess here is <laughs> purely to be able to have lights computer controlled 
and the camera and have these turn off when the camera is firing. Because if I use this, this cannot talk to these. So there's no way this can tell these to turn off before it fires this. And again, batteries. This has no batteries. This runs off this 12 volt power supply, which plugs into the wall. Eventually the Pi will also be powered off this. And then the only thing left to sort of get off battery power is this flash trigger. But yeah, so that's basically the whole setup. And this is just gonna be left to shoot and shoot and shoot. And these are the ones that I'm doing next. These are French Breakfast 2 radishes from Premier Seas Direct. I bought a whole bunch from these guys. These I am really looking forward to trying. They look like some kind of crazy bird eggs. Peas that are supposed to be really good in winter. These are aubergines or eggplants as Americans call them. I still have 16,000 crest seeds left, so I might do some more of those. Bunching onions, mustard seeds, cold weather carrot. We have marigolds. Cucamelons. These, I, I wish I could show you these. I wish these were in a clear packet. These are like, like super, super purple. More carrots, resist the fly, lettuce, and lamb's lettuce. So I've got a whole bunch of different things that I plan to plant and, uh, and grow. Yeah, so that's it for now, I think, on this whole setup. If you want me to do a deeper dive into this thing, let me know and I'll do a video because uh, I'm probably going to rebuild another one with a slightly different configuration just because this was my, my sort of first test. Um, there's a couple of things that I would like to change. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more. If you have any questions about this at all, drop them down in the comments below. If you have any questions about the seeds or the plants, feel free to also drop those down there, although I have probably not going to be able to answer any plant or seed questions because I am not a plant person. I know some people who are, so maybe they can help. Um, <laughs> but that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.